Hey guys, today we're in the kitchen and we just wrapped up a project that Brianna has wanted done for quite a long time. So we debated on uh, the type of back backsplash we were going to have and for a long time she thought she wanted subway tile and uh, I guess I resisted because I'm a little intimidated by the project and then finally she came around to uh, getting one of my grandmother's recipes put on canvas, actually printed on the canvas and then putting it up against the backsplash. So uh, we just finished up, so I'm going to give you a little tour and show you what it looks like, the finished product, and uh, then we've already recorded the time lapse showing the installation. I'm going to write a blog, blog post, it'll be down in the description, and uh, you can see where we ordered it from and how you can get your own, and there's all kinds of details about the quality of image you have to submit so that it turns out to, to look clear once you stretch it to that size of the backsplash. So I'm going to try to turn this around, and we're going to show you what it looks like. Well, I guess I wasn't smart enough to switch it around into forward facing instead of facing me. So it worked out okay though, because I needed it in landscape mode anyhow. I'm um, going to back up, try not to get too much of that sink window because it's putting a lot of light in here this evening. But this is my grandmother Smith's uh, apple cobbler recipe. So you can see it just kind of wraps around here. We've got kind of a small kitchen and uh, worked out just perfect to be able to get this recipe on it. Right here is the recipe it actually came from. So, pretty sweet to have a memory of my grandmother here in our kitchen, and she was a spectacular cook, so uh, pretty fitting. So, just wanted to show you guys what it looked like, and like I said, we'll have a post, and you can see for yourself how to get your own made. And if you have any questions about kind of how we applied it and steps we went through, or kind of what we were thinking and how we did it, feel free to ask us how we did it. Thanks. Hey guys, I was working on this video and I realized I left out a little PSA on safety. So before we got started, we knew we were gonna be taking off all of the uh, covers on all the receptacles and then a cover on a light switch over here for our cabinet lights and also the island light we have. So before we went to taking any covers off, you wanna make sure you go down to your breaker panel and turn those breakers off. So I didn't have a voltmeter here at the house, well I do, but I didn't use it. I used a battery or a phone charger, plug the phone charger into the receptacles, it would charge the phone, turn the breakers off, make sure it's not charging the phone anymore, and just make sure that you've got the right receptacles turned off and uh, also breakers to those lights so that those switches won't be hot either. That way whenever you get started you don't have to worry about working around an uncovered receptacle or light switch that has power present because you are going to be, as you pull the canvas up, up over those uh, receptacles and switches, you're going to be taking a razor blade and cutting out inside that box. You have to trim it out and uh, you'd be putting yourself at risk definitely there because you have the chance of uh, hitting that receptacle with your razor blade. So definitely make sure you take the extra couple minutes and turn the breakers off just so that you're going to be safe or whoever you've got working on is going to be safe. Um, yep, so I meant to say that kind of as I did the walk around, but I forgot to do that. So before you get started taking it on, just make sure you know in advance what you're gonna be turning off to do this safely. The first thing you need to do is wash your wall with a damp washcloth. Once that's dried, you're ready to go ahead and turn the breakers off and remove your receptacle and light switch covers. We began applying the canvas starting at the bottom and working our way uh, from the corner across and then up three or four inches we go back to the corner and work our way across. That's how we did it. And once you go over top of a light switch or receptacle, go ahead and cut that area out just to eliminate that bubble or wrinkle that you get from the actual receptacle or switch protruding out from the wall. Cut it out and then go ahead and work your way across and back up until you get all the way to the underside of the cabinets. So we had ours printed oversized. They're a little bit taller and wider than needed so that when you get to the underside of the cabinets, you simply cut where it meets the the wall and the cabinet meet and you cut off the excess canvas. Same thing whenever you get to a trim like this window trim, you just went all the way kind of up the side of the trim then you just cut down where the trim and the wall intersect and that's how you end up with a perfect uh, match without any uh, open gaps where you could see the paint in behind and the same thing here on the right hand side. I've got it mated all the way up against and then I trim it out. Once you've got that finished, I just kind of went back over my receptacle and light switch boxes, made sure that they were clean, and I could kind of squeegee down to those boxes to eliminate any wrinkles. And then I'm ready to go ahead and put my 
covers and switches back on and then all of our decorations. That's all there was to it. Here's some before and after pictures.